Welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Rancher Forever Shine. Today we're going to be covering choosing your first horse, early game money making tips, the first month's quest progression, and then some tips and tricks at the back end of it. So let's go choose our first horse. When you first go to the auction house, you'll be able to take as long as you want to choose your horse. Time does not matter in this first auction. You can take five minutes, five hours, it doesn't matter. They'll just keep cycling through. The initial colors you'll get will be black, bay, chestnut, and their normal variations. When choosing your first horse, aim for a high potential point. A score of 60 or above is fantastic. Don't forget to look for beneficial traits as well. Our traits like gourmand, vigorous, and superstar are incredibly valuable. Vigorous will help your horse recover energy faster, allowing you to run more races, while superstar can boost your race earnings significantly. Okay, now that we have our first horse, let's go around town and your ranch and pick up all the forageables you can find. Look for oats, orchard grass, carrots, apples, and straw. These items are scattered around and can be a great source of early income. Sell almost everything you collect, but keep some straw for your stalls and a bit of oats for your horses. This will ensure your horses are well fed, the stalls have bedding, and you still make money, and you don't have to necessarily buy so much. Running races is another fantastic way to earn money, especially if your horse has the Vigorous, Superstar, or Gaumont traits. Uh, vigorous can allow your horse to run almost seven races in one day with just one treat to boost energy. Remember, each trait, each race takes about four in-game hours to run, and the races end at 8 p.m. On day four of your first spring, the Lupine Meadow Zone opens up. Here you can buy seeds and fruit trees like apples and pears. These can be a very lucrative investment as they will earn a lot of money when harvested and sold. Also, don't forget to use the manure from your horses to create fertilizer. This will help your crops grow faster and lead to better yields and more profit. You can buy a second horse at any time as long as you have the funds, of course. But on day seven, there is an actual quest for that very thing. And then by day 13, your breeding will open up. You can either buy another horse with breeding in mind or purchase an inexpensive horse, train up its stats, win some races, and sell it for profit. Fast forward to day five, and the new beginner race for the Lupine Meadow is now available. Remember, pears and apples are treats that can boost your horse's energy along with other various treats available in the game. Pears give almost 75% of energy, while apples will only give 25%. On day nine, the second zone, Pine Forest opens up. Here you will meet Liam, the carpenter. He'll help you expand your barn from two stalls to four on day 11. Then on day 13, as we said before, Liam will sell you the fertility pasture for 4,500 gold, allowing you to breed your horse. It is a fantastic investment. On that very same day, you'll get a quest from Shindai, the tax shop owner. Completing it unlocks your first fast travel point between the ranch and the town. You can fast travel to the horse statue, which is right next to the auction house, or right next to your ranch entrance. And then look out for those strange glowing circles that will now appear all over town. Riding through them randomly gives you money, energy, potential, or statue fame. Day 15 brings the opening of the third zone, Crystal Lake, with the beginner race for this zone available on day 16. On day 17, you are able to buy the three wild horse pens, one for each zone that you've opened, from Jai. These will have just beginner stats, but you can purchase upgrades for them later from Jai. Day 18 will be the very first chance you have to get wild horses in the game, but only if you receive a letter from Jai that morning. Once you get the letter, head to the specified zone, open your map, and look for the wild horse icons. Catching wild horses is an exciting part of the game. Approach the horses carefully as they tend to scatter when you approached. Uh, usually you can only round up one at a time. Once you have the horses that interest you, or the whole herd, in the pen, you can inspect one by standing in front of it, pressing E to inspect, then moving to each side and the back of the horse, pressing E to inspect each time. This will let you know the horse's height, gender, color, and stats. After inspecting all of the horses, you have a really hard choice to make. Decide which one you want to adopt. You can only take one home, so choose wisely. Press R on the selected horse to send it to your bind. You have to have an open stall though. Then the other horses will run away. On day 20, River and Liam will surprise you by fixing up your broken round pen for free, allowing you to train your wild horses in any foals you have. By the end of your first spring, all four zones, Lupine Meadow, Pine Forest, Crystal Lake, and the Rocky Mountains will all be open along with their respective beginner races. Four days later in summer, you will start learning about intermediate races. So it's time to train your horses up. 
you will also have unlocked the speed, endurance, and jump training centers in their respective zones. Don't forget to save up for the upgrade so you will be able to train more than one horse a day. You will also be able to upgrade your wild horse pens by this time to include intermediate stats, but they are expensive, running between $22,000 and $38,000 apiece. You can also expand your barn to eight stalls by this time for $35,000. So there's a lot of money making to be had, a lot of races to be had, possibly selling foals and possibly uh, selling wild horses if you so choose. Now on to the tips. First off, did you know hitching posts will slowly increase your horse's energy? It is a great way to keep your horses ready for action without using up your valuable treats. Next, let's talk about the herbal remedies. I know people are having trouble finding them. You can find these at George's store. They're at the very bottom of his buy menu, so make sure you scroll all the way to the bottom. Uh, foraging locations have also changed a bit, so here's an updated list for you. Each of the farmer also sells produce as well as seeds. If you need treats for your horses or items for request, you can buy them from her instead of trying to grow them yourself. She also has a stall in town next to Jaya's shop, and you'll receive a note in the morning if she or Liam are in the town that day. The farmer or the carpenter is in town today is how the uh, note will read. Remember, if they are in town, they cannot be summoned to their home by the counter, but any other time they can be. And speaking of shop owners, you can summon any of the other NPCs to their shop by interacting with the counters in their store from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. After that time, you'll have to find them by the map. Oh, and Madeline's counter is inside the auction house to the right as you enter. Don't worry about buying duplicate tack. Shindai will only sell you tack you have not bought yet, but the items do rotate every day, so if you're looking for something specific, just keep checking the shop. As promised, here is a list of the training traits now available and this is not done by me, this is credit to That's My Life on the Ranch of Rivershine Discord, so please enjoy. That's all for today's beginner's guide to Ranch of Rivershine. Catch those wild horses, grow those crops, and keep having fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that bell icon for more updates, and I'll see you next time.